Okay, let's try this again. Let's go back to that original problem, Kaylina. Go ahead here. No. Wait, 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 wait. Here we go. I should have it memorized. A and B not. Plus A not. Or. I'm sorry. Or. <laughs> A not. Or B not C and C not and D. Or That's B not C not and D. Okay. Or B not and C not. Or A not and B and C and D. A not B C and D. A not B C and D. Okay. So, let me go from Boolean expression to truth table. There's my truth table. I'm going to go from truth table now to simplified Boolean. That simplifies it for me. And then I'm going to go Boolean expression to logic gate. And, wow... It stuck it way down in here. What is the deal with this thing? I can't even get down there on the page. You need not to make a bigger page. Wow. So that's me. I made a bigger page. What, what, what did you do? It asked me if it was make a bigger page, and I said, okay. Hmm. Let me try this again. Boolean, uh, uh, Boolean to gates. Do you want to resize yeah. the sheet size? Still dumping it off the page. Why is this sheet... Seventeen. All right, let's try this again. I still have my Boolean expression in there. So this actually is good to have to try to resize this. Um, Boolean expression to gates. Okay, there it is. So that circuit is the circuit that will give you those Boolean results. So if you plug this in and analyze it, it would give you that truth table, it would give you that Boolean uh, those Boolean results. Now, if we wanted to create the same circuit, actually, let's take a look at the circuit here. And if you could see, we've got inverters, one, two, three inverters. We've got one, two, three, four AND gates, and we've got two OR gates. So how many different components would we need to buy, component types would we need to buy to make the circuit happen? It's not a trick question. 
three. There'd be inverters, there'd be AND gates, and there'd be OR gates. Okay? How many components would I need to buy physically? I need three types of components. I need inverters, I need AND gates, and I need OR gates. How many physical components would I need to go out and buy? Actually, the answer is still probably going to be three. Because what I have is when I buy a, a dual inline package, ultimately there are multiple inverters on one component. So I'd get an inverter chip that has multiple inverters on it, and I would only use three of them. I would get an AND gate that typically is like a quad. There's four of them in one package. So I'd be using all four of those. And then I have um, two OR gates. So I'd still I'd need three types of components. I'd need three physical components. Okay? So let's take a look now. If I make that same circuit out of NAND gates, what changes? Now out of NAND gates, how many types of components would I need to go out and buy? It's not a trick question. One. And that component would be a NAND gate. Assuming that I have four four NAND gates on each chip. Here I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. How many physical components would I need? Three. Three. What's the advantage? Which way should I go? What should I do? Buying in bulk is cheaper. Buying a bulk is cheaper. Buying a bulk is cheaper. So I could do the same thing with really the same number of components why get three different kinds when I could get one kind and just connect it in a manner that's going to give me the same results? One takes more connections. Oh. Yeah, but PCB design is cheap. <laughs> Plus, they all have the same pinout. And again, buying in bulk, you are going to save a ton of money. There's another reason why ultimately what we want you to do here is, is go to NAND gates. That you're going to see there's some programmable arrays that we use that is based on NAND gate technology. So once you got it to that Boolean expression, you could plug that into some other software and then write chips, basically burn your own chips that are, will have a unique digital application. And that typically is based on these NAND gate arrays that are inside the chip. And then once you program it, you basically burn these fusible links and render some of the components non-usable and the rest in a configuration that would be suitable to give you this particular logic output. Does that make sense? So what I want you to do in this chapter is I want you to at least try the Carnot mapping and the Veach diagrams. The book does a great job of just outlining it, of, 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 of how to go about the process. So I want you to at least try to do it at home, but I want you to do your homework on these machines. Not my machine, because my machine won't do it right for you. Actually, I'll simplify the Boolean expression. Why it's uh, uh, doing this other deal is beyond me. So that's something we're going to have to look at, probably reload the software. But th we just proved that these machines here are working okay, so gave us the results that we wanted. Did anybody have any questions for me on anything that I covered this evening with this? If you don't have experience with multi-SIM, this is your time to get the experience with multi-SIM. And obviously you want to be prepared to use it on your quiz. You don't want to sit down on your quiz and like, why come my multi-SIM no start? You know, you want to be able to know how to start it up, how to use that logic converter. Play around with these different components. It's the only way you're going to get good at the software, and it's cheap. It's cheap for you to use. This is not a cheap site license for us to have. Multisim is actually pretty high-priced software for what it does. There's some student versions of it that are stripped down. The nice thing is on the, on the right-hand uh, side here, all of these different instruments, that's what we have all of those turned on. So you can do some really cool stuff. Any other questions, comments, concerns, trials, tribulations, grief, anguish, sorrow? All right, if not, that is all I have for digital lecture tonight. Again, keep in mind, we are not going to have any quizzes until I'm done with digital. But that means continue forging ahead with your homework and with your lab work. Coordinate through your class lead when you're going to take the quizzes and when you're going to take the final. 
but I'm in no hurry, and I'd, I'd rather have the lecture up front than have you try to do this stuff without using the proper tools. Tight? Tight.